Budgeting for A-Level Accounting Budgeting as part of planning Planning is obviously very, very important in order to achieve the goals that have been set and hopefully achieve the maximum possible income. Budgeting is a vitally important tool to help you to do this. Possible problems can be identified and alternative plans made. If you budget carefully, using logic and basic calculations, it helps you to see where you might have shortfalls of cash or where you might not sell as much as you expect, etc. And you can then adjust your plans as necessary. Generally, whatever budget is being made will be done in a columnar format for the particular budget period. The budget period could be a couple of weeks, a few months or a year. The budget figures that are determined may either be incremental. In other words, you use historical figures and simply increase them by a set percentage based on whatever your goals or objectives are or inflation or particular cost increases that you would expect. Alternatively, you can do a zero-based budget. A zero-based budget is more time-consuming and therefore expensive to create. However, it may be more realistic. This means that you start from a base of zero and consider all the activities that will take place and work out what you expect your budgets to be rather than looking at historical costs. To start with, you will need to draw up departmental budgets in order to determine what your overall income and expenses would be for a particular period. You would start with your sales budget. Um, well, generally, this is where people start. Um, this would involve looking at what you expect your sales to be based on your historical sales, as well as your goals and marketing that has been planned. You also need to consider things like customer demand, which may be affected by whatever the competition is doing, as well as the state of the economy. Once you've worked out how many units you think you could sell at a particular price, you can then work out the sales per month. From this, you can then draw up both a trade receivables budget, which determines when you expect your customers to pay you based on both the sales and your credit terms that you offer, as well as historically how well they generally pay you. You can then also draw up your production budget, which tells you how much you need to produce in order to sell your expected items. Your production budget will also take into account your expected inventory levels at the beginning and end of the period, as you have planned. From the production budget, you can then determine your labor budget and your purchases budget. Your labor, bu labor budget will need to help you uh, figure out how many labor hours are needed in order to achieve the set production, um, which will also involve possibly deciding how many workers you need. Maybe you don't have enough labor hours and need to either employ more people or include overtime, etc. This may also involve additional costs of hiring workers or overtime expenses, and this will all go into the labor budget. Your purchases budget will be for raw materials if you are going to put items into production, as well as if you are going to simply resell products, how many products you need to buy. In both cases, it will be drawn up very similarly to the production budget. In other words, taking into account expected inventory at the beginning and end of the period as you have planned. From the purchases budget, you can then also determine your trade payables budget. In other words, how much and when do you have to pay your suppliers for the items that you have per are planning to purchase from them? You can then draw up your cash budgets from all these departmental budgets. A cash budget is simply a forecast of future cash flows for the period that is being budgeted for. 
it only includes bank and cash transactions. So when you buy or sell something on credit, it will not be taken into account. You will only plan for items that will affect your actual bank account or cash on hand. It will, however, also include all your capital and revenue transactions, as long as they are affecting cash. So if, for example, you buy non-current assets for cash, you will need to include this in your cash budget as part of your plan of where your cash will come from and where your cash will go out to. Liquidity is vital for the business survival. If you do not have liquidity and are not able to pay your debts as they become due, you may find that your business fails, not due to a lack of profitability, but simply because you do not have the cash to carry on your operations. For this reason, a cash budget is vital. A cash budget will identify any possible cash shortfalls that you might be able to predict in the future. And so, because it's planning before it happens, you can then plan for any finance that will be needed and avoid those problems. You can also use a cash budget to try to help you manage your customer collections and your supplier payments. A cash budget will generally be drawn up in columnar format, as all other budgets are. In this case, it has been drawn up for a three-month period, showing a different column for each month, as well as a total column. A total column is not always used, but can be helpful. As you can see, you start off with all your cash receipts being listed in the first part of the budget, you then show all your cash payments that you expect to make and then you can work out what the overall cash surplus or shortfall, otherwise also known as a cash deficit, is expected to be. You can then factor in your bank opening balance to get your expected bank closing balance for that period. The master budget can then be drawn up after having done all the departmental and cash budgets. All the information that you have created needs to be assimilated. The departmental budgets, which may be drawn up by each department and then fed through, as well as the cash budget, will be used to put all this information together into one main master budget. The master budget is quite simply a forecast of what the financial statements are expected to look like in the future. In other words, you would draw up a forecast manufacturing account or production statement to forecast what your production costs would be. You would draw up a forecast statement of income to predict your net profit for the period and you would draw up a statement of financial position as at a future date. This will help you to see what your assets, equity and liabilities are expected to look like. Budgetary control is vitally important for the success of any budgetary planning. Without control, drawing up budgets is actually a complete waste of time. So it's very important that you do make regular comparisons with the predetermined objectives. You will compare your budgeted figures to the actual figures to determine discrepancies and to try to work out what needs to be done from that. Once you've determined your discrepancies, you can either use this to either curb overspending where you find that your actual figures are far too high, or alternatively, you might find that perhaps your budget is not realistic and then you need to adjust your budget accordingly. Flexed budgets take into account the fact that actual production will affect the actual variable costs. Sometimes what will happen is for some reason the actual production is not the same as that which was planned. This means that the variable costs that are actual will vary greatly from those that were budgeted. To be more realistic, you need to then be able to adjust your budget to account for a change in the quantity of units produced. In other words, a flexed budget 
will then take into account any changes in the quantity produced and redraw up your variable costs based on that so that you have a new variable budget or new budget for those variable costs. You can then compare them to the actual figures to get more realistic, more accurate discrepancies. This will allow for better decisions.